All right, so I finally broke down and bought Schmuckler and Seal's Forgotten Flies, and I'm gonna be tying my first one out of it right now. Hello everybody, welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So the pattern I picked out of this thing, it's a streamer, it's a very unique pattern. It was created by William F. Blades and first published in his 1951 Fishing Flies and Fly Tying. Now I couldn't find much information on this book. I did see one copy on eBay, and I also couldn't find much information on William F. Blades other than that he grew up in England. So the pattern I'm gonna be doing is called Blades Weighted Bucktail Number One. And hardly any information on the pattern out there, so I'm thinking this is truly a forgotten fly. But it's a really cool pattern. It's fairly unique in that the underbody is weighted wraps and the overbody is just two different colors of, you know, wire. I'm using UTC wire in a red and silver. So of course, I've never fished this fly. I never tied it until today, but I'm thinking it's gonna be a pretty effective fly. If you need a streamer that's gonna get down really deep, maybe you're fishing in the wintertime and the fish are holed up really deep, or you just wanna strip it through some pretty fast water. I think this will be a good one for that. So it's a really cool looking pattern, not too difficult to tie. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, Blades Weighted Bucktail number one, not the number two. Maybe we'll do that one later. Now I'm tying this on a size six, it's five extra long streamer hook. Pinch my barb, I've got that in there, and I am putting weight down. The recipe does call for it. Now, it's not a thick wire. This is an 015, but we're pretty much gonna put it the whole length of the hook. So just go ahead and wrap it up right until right behind the eye. Okay, now that you got that on there, I'd say that's at least two thirds of the hook. A black thread, and I'm using 70 denier, but use a 140 or a six alt if you want. I'm not putting, you know what, I'm gonna go just a little bit farther back, because I'm not putting anything behind that weight. So just a small dam behind it, just enough to keep it from sliding, and then a dam up front. Now I'm keeping my thread up front because I'm gonna catch the wire in up front and run it along the length of the body before I start wrapping it. Now here's where you have an option. Now this is a medium, UTC ultra wire and a medium. Both these pieces are medium, a red and a silver. If you wanted one of the colors to dominate, make that color the bigger color. If you wanted it to be a little bit more silver, you know, maybe go with a medium and a silver and then a small and the red or vice versa. So I'm gonna just catch this in right up here and try to lay them back, oh, parallel to the hook and just put a, a thread base all the way down, covering up most of the color. So I'm taking it back just to the, the very back. I don't really wanna get it back down to the hook because I want my first wraps to really be on top of that weight. Okay, so I think that's gonna work. Go ahead and take your thread back up here. Watch those little sharp points. You might have some. And I'm gonna put a half hitch in my thread just right up here because I am gonna use the rotary on this tie, which I don't that often when I'm making a video because I've got a backdrop here and it often gets in the way. But in this case, I'm going to. It will just make it, you know, take a minute off the time. So since this regal is not a true rotary, what I have to do is, you know, adjust the position of the hook, try to get it parallel to the axis of rotation here. Now just pull these up and you'll need probably, oh, a good eight inches of wire on this. And if you use a thinner wire, you might need even more. So I'm going to, you know, pull it down and then I'm going to rotate the device as I get this on up here. And don't worry if you don't get them perfect. Um, the one I saw in the book certainly wasn't perfect. They were a little bit all over the place, and I think that's gonna be fine. That's why we have that big black base underneath. That way, if these aren't uh, right next to each other, it's still gonna look fine. Okay, now there we go. That is certainly not perfect, 
but it's going to be good enough. And you can see I, I took the wraps just a little bit farther up than the weight underneath, and that's going to be fine. That's pretty much where we're going to be tying the bucktail down in just a second. So several wraps, not just two or three right here, because this is thick wire and you need a, a fair amount to secure it. And I'm gonna go ahead and helicopter these off one at a time. Certainly not using my scissors on that medium wire, but here's where you need to be careful. Where you break them off, you might have a couple of sharp points. What you should probably do is spend a few loose wraps just trying to bury those or you will break your thread. I've broken my thread at least twice already tonight. Okay, now we can get our hook back in there to make it easier to tie. Now let's tie in the throat. So some red bucktail, not a big piece, just put a, a fairly small piece in your stacker. Got it right here, that's gonna be enough. I'm gonna flip it over and I want it at least to the point of the hook, maybe even a little bit beyond it. So I probably should have waxed my thread, but I didn't, I forgot to do that. So I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna put some wraps. You see how I'm going back over those, that UTC wire? That's fine. So let's take a look at it. That's coming off how I want, but it's sticking a little bit farther down than I'd like. So I'm gonna take a few medium wraps right here just to try to lay it a little bit closer to the hook. Okay. There we go, now that looks like the one in the picture. So let's go ahead and snip this excess off, really as close as you can get it, because you know these big bucktail streamers, you'll end up with a big head if you're not careful. You kind of end up with a big head anyway, sometimes it's unavoidable, but be as economical as you can with your thread wraps and it'll make for a better looking fly. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is the, the first part of the wing, white bucktail. And again, I take a piece, probably maybe a third more than I want, and then I'll put it in my stacker. And this gives you the luxury of thinning it out a little bit. So you could grab the tips and then just pull some of that, the shorter hairs out and this is gonna be about what we want. Okay, and we're gonna tie it in a little bit longer than the bend of the hook, and I am definitely going to wax this thread or else I risk this thing spinning all around on me. And what I'll do with a bucktail like this, whether it's a Mickey Finn or a Black Nose Dace, oftentimes, and well, most times actually, I will put a couple wraps just around the bucktail. So I've got my length measured right there, I'm going to put it in my material hand, and in this case, I'm going to actually do two wraps around just the bucktail, and then one around the, the bucktail and the hook, and then I pull it tight. So with any luck, that bucktail is going to stay on top of the hook and not spin around. So I've got a couple of tight wraps. You can see that front flaring up on me. I'm not putting real tight wraps going back because I don't want as much flare on the back. I would rather have it laying flatter on the back. So that white is looking okay right there. Let's go ahead and trim this excess. Okay, I didn't leave too much up there, but what you will want to do is just spend a few wraps to try to smooth this out. It will make us wrapping that next piece just a little bit easier. Okay, and the topping for it is just red. So more of that red bucktail. Also put it in your stacker, thin it out, and I would say just a little bit less than we did on the white. So this piece is a little bit smaller than the, the white piece I had. And I, my thread isn't all the way back yet, which is good because I'm gonna catch it in right here, and that will give me a little bit of room to um, lay it flat if needed. And I forgot to put wax on again. So there's my wax. Now let's measure our length here. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. And on this one, I'm gonna do at least one wrap. I'm probably not gonna do two because this is a, a thinner piece. One wrap around just the, the hair should be fine. Now a wrap around the hair and the hook. 
And let's do a couple of tight wraps before we go back. And our goal here is to have that red on top of the white without them intermingling too much. If they do, I don't think it's a big deal. It's kind of like a Mickey Finn. A lot of folks say that Mickey Finn is a more effective fly when you have the red and yellow all mixing and intermingling. I don't know enough one way or the other, but I think that's okay right there. I've got them laid back how I want. A little bit of flare up front, but not a big deal. Let's go ahead and trim this off. Okay, so our head's getting a little big, but it's not too bad yet. Got a little bit of those white spinning around, but we might just be able to trim those up, clean it up at the end. So the last thing we're gonna put on it, a couple of jungle cock eyes. Just size to match whatever you're doing. And this one, I don't know, I'd say it's a medium eye right here. And I'm gonna tie it pretty long, not all the way to the midpoint of the, the fly, but you know, a pretty good size, a noticeable eye on it. Let's do the same thing on this side. Just try to match them, match the lengths and the size if you can. And if you don't, don't worry about it because, you know, fish can only see one, one of the eyes at a time anyway. And I'm messing this one all up. It's just kind of going a little crazy on me. So I'm going to try that one again. Now that's three wraps on this one. All right, those eyes are okay. That front one is maybe just a little bit high. All right. Now it's a little bit low. All right, that's what I want right there. So now I'm just gonna pinch them and put a couple of tighter wraps to really lock them in. All right, I've got the position I want. Let's go ahead and snip these excess butt ends off right here. Now let's take our thread back up and then ramp it up. And we're not done just yet. Um, I want to bury all these jungle cock right here. And what you might want to do if your wing is still propped up a little too high, which oftentimes it will be, you'll just take your head a little bit farther back with some medium wraps. And I don't necessarily need to in this case because I like that top wing. Got a little bit of trimming we're gonna to need to do, but for the most part, I think we're in fine shape. So I'm gonna take my thread kind of back up and I'm gonna do my whip finish up front. And let's see if we have any cleanup. Some of those white uh, hairs on the side are coming down, so you might just wanna reach in here and trim them. If you're making an Instagram fly, yeah, sure, trim them. If you're making a fishing fly, probably don't worry about it. I think it's good enough and this thing's gonna fish. Just drop of head cement and this thing's going in my box. So there you go, Blades Weighted Bucktail number one. Not a very difficult tie, but a pretty cool classic looking pattern. So that's it everybody, I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.